This past Wednesday, the Fiat Federal Reserve made next to no changes in their emergency accommodative stance of buying $120 billion per month of bonds and mortgage-backed securities, as well as continuing to keep interest rates pinned down near historic 5,000-year low levels. The buzzword amongst mainstream financial headlines and contributing parakeets was that this recent statement was somehow hawkish, given that the Fed claimed they are now moving up the potential start of rate hikes to the year 2023 from 2024. Today, the Federal Open Market Committee kept interest rates near zero and maintained our asset purchases. Inflation has increased notably in recent months. As the reopening continues, shifts in demand can be large and rapid, and bottlenecks, hiring difficulties, and other constraints could continue to limit how quickly supply can adjust, raising the possibility that inflation could turn out to be higher and more persistent than we expect. We will aim to achieve inflation moderately above 2% for some time so that inflation averages 2% over time, and longer-term inflation expectations remain well anchored at 2%. We expect to maintain an accommodative stance of monetary policy until these employment and inflation outcomes are achieved. With regard to interest rates, we continue to expect that it will be appropriate to maintain the current 0 to one quarter percent target range for the federal funds rate until labor market conditions have reached levels consistent with the committee's assessment of maximum employment and inflation has risen to 2% and is on track to moderately exceed 2% for some time. This mere change of we might hike in 2023 was enough impetus and cover to send derivative price discovery markets for underlying commodities into sell-offs across the board. The fall in gold derivative-driven spot price was perhaps most profound. After having hovered around fighting at the 1900 level for many weeks, we ended Thursday's trading range around 17.75 per troy ounce. Spot silver pierced the 26 per troy ounce level, and the gold silver ratio moved up slightly to 68. Peter Bokvar mentioned on Thursday, for those watching gold and the pullback in response to the slightly less dovish Fed, it's now the most oversold as measured by the seven-day RSI since August 2018, when it was trading around 1,175. Personally speaking. I did not hesitate once gold fell into the 1700s Thursday to take advantage by buying this dip in both silver and gold. Truth bomb video clips like the one Cal Bass dropped on CNBC this past Tuesday simply steal my resolve. If you have been following our SD Bullion YouTube channel, it's quite likely you'll have known nearly every point he's about to mention. Somebody who's looking to invest in the market, what do these hotter numbers mean? What, what does that mean for the Fed? When you look at the inflation numbers, these are chain-weighted inflation numbers. These are numbers that are designed to artificially be low, to be low. If you look at an, a non-chain-weighted uh, index of inflation, we think it's running about 12%. Uh, that means people that have money in the bank uh, and their savings are losing call it 5 to 12 percent of their purchasing power now annually. So we have 34 percent more money in the U.S. system than we had 14 months ago. Of course, we're going to have inflation and it's going to be significant. No, I agree. I agree. You, might, you have to be invested uh, given the amount of capital that's in the in the not only the U.S. market, the global market, looking at, at the global central bank's uh, response to not only the virus, but also back to even the, the financial crisis, um, you know, in 2008. Typically, stocks keep up with about 85 percent of inflation. So you're, you're, you're not going to lose too much by owning the market uh, vis-a-vis inflation. You're going to need to make uh, mid-teens numbers just to just to break even, given the numbers we're seeing today. Man, that's a pretty lousy argument for investing. You're not going to lose too much money if you're invested in the market. I, I mean, Kyle. <laughs> but if you just look at retail sales, right, retail sales are at new all-time highs in nominal terms today, much higher than they were pre, pre-pandemic. Uh, and we still lack about 8 million jobs. So it's fascinating to see kind of the net results of such Fed largesse and, and, and the money that they've printed. We have negative real rates, we think, of, of over 10 percent today, meaning you're losing 10 percent of your purchasing power uh, annually at, at the current moment. And so uh, negative real rates are pretty repressive. When food prices start moving like the U.N. Ag and Food Index has moved in the last, call it, five months, um, that's, a, that's a huge regressive tax on the poor. And um, I think the Fed's got to really start thinking about food prices. On behalf of SDBullion.com, this is James Anderson bringing you this week's SD Bullion Market Update. Viewer note, I'm recording this content late on Thursday, June 17, 2021, but I strongly believe most of the week's big news will be curated and contained in this brief but powerful packed update. Before we go further, do me the quick 
favor of smashing the like button here below so we can have this platform's algorithm serve this content to fellow like-minded bullion buyers. Speaking for myself, the biggest silver and gold news of the week were many remarks made by billionaire speculative trader Paul Tudor Jones on CNBC this past Monday, June 14th. I'm going to play the full six-minute clip courtesy of CNBC without interruption. And then I'll return back to highlight some of the most important points he made regarding ongoing silver, gold, and derivative-driven commodity price markets. Here's the real question. Right. If things are bad as crazy right. right now, and you are a trader, right. not necessarily even a long-term investor, but a trader, let's just say you're, you're thinking about how to, where to put your money. I'd actually love to hear about it in the context of being a trader, but also actually as a long-term investor. What are you supposed to do in this environment? Well, I'm going to watch the Fed on Wednesday. Uh, if they treat these numbers, which were material events, they're very material, if they treat them with nonchalance, then I, I think it's just a green light to, 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 to bet heavily on every inflation trade. The idea that inflation tra is transitory, uh, to me, is, is that, that one just doesn't work the way I see the world. So I look at $88 trillion of assets under management by asset managers. Of that, $670 billion are invested in commodity indices like uh, Bloomberg Commodity Index, Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. That's about three quarters of 1%. If I rewind just to 2011, when inflation was peaking at 3%, not CPI at 4.9, those same investors had 1.2% of their assets, which would imply today if they just got back to wait, another $400 billion of buying in commodity indices. And if you, certainly the impact models that we run would, would argue that GSER or BCOM would double or triple. So you've got, if I just look at where asset managers are, 60-40 types. The one thing that they should be invested in, they're not invested in, probably because they're hearing these assurances that inflation's transitory. So you've got this massive short, really, in the commodity complex. A, a massive short there. So that makes me think that, um, and I look at the balances in a variety of commodities, and they're all so razor thin. They're all so razor thin. And this is just what happens if institutional money right. would get to where they should be, given the level of real rates. What happens if the Reddit crowd ever gets into commodities? God forbid if the bullies, the financial markets, ever were to take it on. For instance, like retail did back in the 70s. Explain what you mean by that. What I mean is, is that uh, commodity, commodities are a finite supply, small markets, generally speaking, uh, and if we ever get an inflationary psychology, like, for instance, we did when I was uh, in my 20s back in the 70s, if we ever get that again, uh, and if you ever got retail actually nervous about inflation, then uh, the one thing that leads inflation, which is commodity right. prices, one of the, it's, the, it's the easiest tautology there is, those things can literally screen double or triple with no problem whatsoever. So you're wor but you're worried about the, the Reddit crowd getting involved in commodities right now. No, I'm, I'm saying that right now I would be a lot. More, look, I'm, I'm, I think I'm the most conservative investor in the world. That's a hedge fund manager by definition hates risk, loves edges, loves competitive edges, does great reward and risk trades. I would be really concerned about um, arguing that inflation is transitory. Right. When I know that you've got, uh, look, think about it. We have a just-in-time mentality. We have inventories at record low. We have demand screaming. And we have people who are really in, under-invested where they should be, given the valuations right. of a variety of financial assets. You said if the, if the Fed doesn't make any moves this week, that it's going to be a green light. I, well, for me, it would be a green light. But the question is, so it, it may be a green light temporarily, but you're also suggesting that there's going to be a hard stop at some point, that, that it's going to create an even bigger problem. I, I, well, and so how, do you, how is a long-term investor think about that? Listen, the, the, I, I, I have maintained I'm so happy I don't have to run a pension fund. I don't know how you'd invest those assets when valuations for both uh, interest rates and stocks are at 
if you combine the two, they're they're so overvalued. They're at hundred year highs. I don't know. I don't know what you do. I know one thing I'd want to do is the one thing that can hurt that is inflation. I'd have as many inflation hedges on as I possibly could. I sit on, uh, you know, the investment committee of these not for profits, and um, it's really difficult to try to explain to some of the board members of our not for profits. Gee, maybe now's not the best time to be invested in a variety of finance. Maybe we should be. Maybe we should own commodities at this stage of the game. Right. Can I just say one last thing? The December, the December 2018 meeting, if you think about that meeting that uh, the Fed had, with pretty much the same board makeup, they had a lot of incoming data between that meeting and the one prior to that. Stock market was down 12%. GSCI was down. Commodities were down 20%. The credit markets were frozen. But they went on and hiked because they were locked in to this linear belief that I can have a forecast and that we should stay with it. The predictability was more important than reactivity. So I think they had the same, and seven months later, they had to reverse course and take that back. I think we're confronted with exactly the same situation right now. In mid-May 2020 on this SD Bullion channel, we did a thorough 22 minute video on both the background of now billionaire Paul Tudor Jones and his then bullishness for both gold and Bitcoin the latter of which went on to sixfold in fiat value within one year of publishing that video. I'll leave a link to that video below, and at the end of this week's update, many of the bullish bullion points he made back then are more so appropriate now, given the recent rampings in our fiat Federal Reserve note monetary base and M123 supplies since. And turning back to his CNBC interview only a few days ago, Paul Tudor Jones pointed out that we have mostly razor-thin finite commodity supplies. Also, that now in 2021, financial institutions are nowhere near their 2011 commodity investment allocations. And he declaratively asked, what happens if the Reddit crowd ever gets into commodities? Well, judging by the now near 120,000 members of the Reddit Wall Street forum to date, I'd say that's already happening and growing week after week. Paul Tudor Jones then went on to state, God forbid if the bullies of the financial markets were ever to take commodities on like they did in the 1970s, they could double or triple in price, no problem whatsoever. So much like the current retail Wall Street bets crowd is being used by long hedge funds as cover to produce short gamma squeeze price ramps in stocks like GameStop, Nokia, and AMC, what Mr. Jones in a coded language is inferring to is that such a similar phenomenon could also eventually show up in the commodity markets. My cynical suggestion is that historically silver price spikes need scapegoat covers and fall guys akin to the Hunt brothers of the 1970s and 1980. Thus, it appears bullies like himself of the fiat overfinancialized system might just use the growing Reddit commodity crowd as cover for the coming mania in silver price and gold valuation uprisings. Perhaps in time we will look back seeing that in this latest derivative driven price pullback the bullies began to increasingly pile in. This week, the Wall Street Silver team interviewed Rick Rule, a Sprott uh, shareholder of the PSLV and former president of Sprott, his statement regarding what has been happening in the silver market and, to his surprise, how effective it has been in terms of the Wall Street Silver movement regarding the PSLV closed-end fund. You may recall our first interview uh, when you asked about the availability at the wholesale level, and I said I never would have expected that an aggregation of retail buyers could impact the physical supply in thousand ounce products, <laughs> but it did. Uh, and my suspicion is that what you're seeing in silver right now uh, has two impacts. One is a near term impact and some people are attracted to silver in the context of a, a silver squeeze. But the more important thing that's happening is that a whole generation of investors, some young, some old, are being attra are being attracted to the subject of silver. Uh, and in fact, the necessity of having a medium of exchange that's simultaneously a source of value. In other words, I think that this has longer legs than say GameStop or AMC, which are simply about market structure mm -hmm. rather than about the utility of the, of the substance itself. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what particularly attracts me.
My strong suggestion is that we collectively keep our eyes laser focused on the larger underlying fiat monetary base rampings running amok. Continuing loose emergency financial policies are bound to blow back in further fiat currency debasement and acutely rising precious commodity valuations for silver and gold bullion. That's all for this week's SD Bullion Market Update. As always, to you, the viewer out there, take great care of yourself and those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally, hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content. Give us your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what you think and which topics you want to hear more about.